officially get started uh, to teaching the virtually real case study. Uh, my name is Lisa Leander. I'm with the Global Business School Network. I'm the engagement officer. Well, we're located in Washington, D.C., and we were established in 2003 as a program of the IFC at the World Bank. Um, and we look to ways to mobilize the expertise of top business schools around the world to strengthen management education in the developing world. Um, we're now an independent nonprofit. Uh, we have over 60 um, international member schools represented in 28 countries. Um, our mission, again, is to use the power of our network to facilitate collaboration, knowledge sharing, and use management education um, to improve uh, living standards and best practice. Again, this is our um, spread of member schools. Happy to talk to anyone who's joining us today who'd like to talk about membership um, and on uh, many of our activities. Um, and we're also looking to continuously grow. We've actually just added one more member, so we're now 61 uh, business schools. We have a lot of different activities. We do have our annual conference. We'll be having, hosting an upcoming technology summit in Singapore uh, in April prior to the AACSB conference. We do uh, webinars like this one, panel discussions, online groups, uh, peer mentoring, as well as participating in our um, programs abroad, our international capacity building programs. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce Professor Sabine Imad from the University of Applied Science Western Switzerland Business School. She joins us today from Switzerland. I'm also pleased to um, introduce Dr. Wade Halverson. Um, he's from SPJ and School of Global Management, um, and he's joining us from Dubai this morning. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Happy to be here. Good morning. I'm now going to go ahead, Sabine, if you'd like to go ahead and um, start your presentation. Yes. Is it my presentation on screen already? Let me go ahead. Uh, not sure. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> so, there we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on teaching the virtually real case study. So I'm saying hello because I know that people are connected from different locations of the world, and for some people it's morning, for others it's evening. So hello is more for everybody. In today's presentation, Wade and I will describe an innovative, flexible, and efficient method to teach marketing case studies that won the Case Center, previously ECCH, Innovation in Case Teaching Competition in 2013, earlier this year. Our goal was to overcome the reluctance of students to invest the time and effort that's needed to prepare case studies effectively. We will show you how we have transformed a case study into a game-like experience in Second Life. Using a design science research methodology, we developed a prototype that enriches the traditional written case studies and turns them into an interactive online teaching and learning tool, most particularly adapted to today's digital native students. It also fosters teamwork and collaboration. We'll tell you how we have tested this prototype on two separate groups of, uni of university students who worked and collaborated together from two geographically separated locations, adding a cross-cultural component to the learning exercise. We later also used this method with larger groups of students, maxing with a class of 250 students. Lastly, we will share with you the strengths and weaknesses that we have identified from the qualitative and quantitative feedback that we gathered from the students before we'll conclude on the next steps of this promising approach. Wait. Thanks, Sabine. So our next slide shows today's students are digital natives. Have we got that one there, Sabine? Terrific. Yes, we do. Look at those eager little faces. I'd like you all just to spend a second and have a look in the eyes of those young kids, all attracted to digital technologies of one sort or another, gaming consoles, uh, computers, and even an iPad on the left there. So several research studies conducted in the States and elsewhere show that today's students are the digital natives and gamers. They have various gaming consoles, they most play video games regularly between 8 and 13 hours a week. And they even spend time researching the internet or posting on forums or wikis in relation to those games. 
They have special characteristics important for learning and information seeking behaviour. Students most at risk for failure in traditional classrooms spend an average of about 27 minutes a day more than the others using video games. The way schools are currently set up could be disabling for today's digital native students who might strive and thrive if given a different learning environment. So this enables us to conclude that the use of video games as a teaching tool deserves serious consideration as a means of presenting information and bridging learning concepts. Crawford uh, in 1982 even went further when he stated that game playing is a vital educational function for any creature capable of learning. On this picture you can see what you'll never see in nature, uh, a lioness teaching her cub in front of a chalkboard. As Crawford explained, we don't see mother lions lecturing cubs at the chalkboard. The weird invention is not learning by playing, but it's learning with, ch with chalkboards in schools. Research that was conducted in the UK in 2002 also shows that gameplay can help develop valuable skills important to marketers, such as, for example, strategic thinking or planning or communication or negotiation skills or group decision making or also data handling. Other re another researcher called Kerimir um, also stated that there are two th key themes common to educational games. The first one is the desire to harness the motivational power of games in order to make learning fun. And the second one is be the belief that learning through doing in games offers a powerful learning tool. Wait. Wait. Can you hear me there? Wait. Uh, yeah, now I From can hear you. the convergence of high speed, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> um, good, great. I'll, um, I'll get back to the convergence concept. From the convergence of high-speed internet access, high-powered personal computers and massive multiplayer online games has emerged internet-based, three-dimensional, fully immersive virtual worlds. Virtual worlds are nowadays available in a multitude of forms. Second Life is probably the most popular for business and educational purposes. Second Life is a particularly interesting virtual world because it provides a sort of open sandbox, an infrastructure for its residents to create their own virtual reality. It provides them with unlimited opportunities to build their own environment and to use it for whatever purposes they choose. A Knights and Dragons quest, a corporate sales mission, or for enterprise architecture training. Our experience is that Second Life provides a powerful platform for educators to create and to control marketing teaching simulations with no prior programming skills and in a very simple and importantly cost effective way. Now if we looked at if we look at marketing education for a moment, one of the most popular tools used by marketing educators to bring their business scenarios to life in the classroom is the case study. Uh, Greg argued in 1951 that the case method should be used in teaching because wisdom can't be told. And Harvard, for example, one of the world's highest business profile business schools, has used the case method since as far back as 1924. I think that in some classes they exclusively use the case method, by the way. There are two pedagogical approaches to case teaching. One of the approaches is that the students come and present their um, recommendations. The other approach is that the instructors lead a discussion and they come to a conclusion together. Some instructors, like Rangan, a marketing professor at Harvard, prefers what we call choreographing a case, where the instructor leads the students through the key conceptual and decision issues in the case without necessarily prejudging the correctness of their contribution. But student pre preparation is always key for case discussion because a truly effective case instructor relies on the students to draw conclusions and make recommendations based on their own inductive process. According to researchers, regardless of the style utilized by the professors, there are two necessary components to a successful case teaching class. One is the student preparation and the second one is the class participation. So this means that clearly students need to invest time and effort in reading for case preparation. 
But research also shows, unfortunately, that today's students tend to be less willing to make, to make such an investment in their learning. So, with all of this background, the question we wanted to address is can we actually get marketing students to invest more effort and energy in their learning by adding the power of gaming and simulation to the traditional case study method? And so to answer that question, we used a design science research methodology. So the design science research uh, methodology, uh, for those who are familiar with it, works according to an iterative process whereby prototypes or what they call artifacts are developed and tested until a satisfactory stage is, is reached. The figure on this slide shows you the artifact concept that was adopted for this study. It aims at transforming our subject group of students from case readers who, according to Crawford, um, must infer causal relations, relationships from a single sequence of facts into players who gather the text information through an immersive simulation activity in which they are encouraged to explore alternative contrapositives and inversions as they are free to explore the causal relationship from many different angles. As you can see on this figure, the way the method works is that a case study is deconstructed, the information is split between different roles, then the information is spread around a virtual location, students are split in teams where each member is assigned a specific role or function if you will, and these teams must hunt for the information before they can be able to cooperatively reconstruct the case and solve it. As you can see, the concept also incorporates the important di dimension of teamwork as it has been clearly advocated by researchers that employees must be able to communicate across functions to solve problems. So now what we'd like to do is if you have a look at the screen, we'd like to show you a short video, but before we start that, you can see at the bottom, this video that we're about to show actually is hosted in YouTube. We'll show that uh, link again at the end of today's session. But if you'd like to see the video um, in full, we're not exactly sure how it's going to run on the screen here in the, in the environment here, but the short video shows the experiment we did last October with students from Geneva in Switzerland and Perth in Western Australia. So normally, we should be able to show you the video on a big screen. For those of you who aren't using the viewer, Firestorm or any other generation type of viewer would work. Sven, let's roll the video. So I'm going to run the video and uh, I will talk uh, you quickly through the video with live comments for those of you who might have a slower video connection. That's a little bit technical, a technical challenge for me, so uh, please bear with me for a moment. Okay, so the experiment was conducted uh, in October 2018. Uh, then we did another one, as I said earlier, a few months later with 250 Australian students. Can you hear? Yep, clearly. Can you hear anything? Yes, I can hear you. I can't hear the video. Though. Yes, it's going great. Hello? Go ahead. It sounds great. Keep going. Can you hear the video? Yes, but we it's can hear showing. you, so continue. Anyway. So um, this video shows uh, 55 students from two participating universities in Geneva, Switzerland and Perth, Australia. As you can see here, we reconstructed the case environment, um, which is virtual Dublin, on our own island in Second Life. You can see the reproduced location here. The idea is that the students were supposed to hunt for the case information on that location. The video now shows you the students in real life sitting in front of their in computers with the virtual environment on their screens. On the screen you can also see, if you pay attention, uh, the, you can see them moving their avatars, which is their virtual self in world. They were working in groups of two, uh, sorry, of three or four, and as you can see, group members are collaborating, helping each other reach the goal of collecting all the case pieces. Once they have, here you can see them collecting the case information, so they're running through the location, clicking on stuff where they can get the, info, the, case, piece, the case pieces. Let That's me start one avatar here. going in what's supposed to be the office of one of the uh, protagonists in the case, 
getting some information and he's there with a colleague of his. Um, then once they have finished collected, collecting the case information, they have to continue working together within their group to reconstruct the case, solve it and prepare a presentation with their recommendations. Today. Of course, Today. those who prefer care, case discussions Today. instead of presentations can, can also go that route. But Wade and I had chosen the presentation method on that occasion. Today. Again, the video shows a high Wait, level of interaction among you. students as they are preparing their presentations. Here you can see the Swiss students presenting. So that's the presentation of one group presenting in English. And later you will see the presentation from another group who chose to present in French. They had a choice to use the language they wanted. Now, due to time zone scheduling issues, the hunt took place separately in Switzerland and Australia. But in the second experiment, um, we provided more time for the hunt which enables to overcome the time zone issues. If one wishes to use this method across campuses, for example, located in different parts of the world. So here you can see the Australian students doing the hunt and then they had time to pre prepare their presentation. And they, at the end, um, to conclude the exercise, everyone uh, gathered in Second Life in a virtual auditorium to present the results. That's an Australian group presenting their results. And then uh, you will see um, a Swiss group presenting their results. And of course, all the group presented their results, but we only chose to run a few, um, to show you a couple of examples. So that's the Swiss groups presenting their results. And uh, in Geneva, the, there was a very high level of interaction from the class and they were very happy with their presentations. And at the end of their exercise, you will be able to see them all applauding the exercise that we did. So now let me go back to uh, the presentation. And I hope we haven't lost anyone when we ran this video, if you were able to see it. Um, Today. Can I chip in? So, um, I'm not sure where I am now. Just a second. While you're finding that, let me say one of the major benefits of simulating the case study in a virtual environment like this was that the students were only able to gather information that was relevant to their role. So we had a marketing manager, an IT manager, for example, uh, an operations manager. So they were only able to gather information relevant to their role. And one of the key parts of the case study benefit was that they got to share that with the other members of their team. So we simulated more of a work-like function rather than giving full information to everybody in the printed sheet, which is the traditional case study method. Thanks, Ben. OK. So uh, now, can you see the slides again on the screen? Yep, they're coming okay. up well. So let's, now let's go into the details of the test. A marketing case entitled Selling Green Dots on Second Life. It was written by Wade, who is with us today, and some colleagues in 2009. So that case was selected along with its teaching note from the Harvard or the ECCH, now the Case Center, uh, Library of Mrs. Case, case Studies. And the case was like all case studies written like a story, uh, according to Crawford that I mentioned earlier, to Crawford's definition, meaning that it was written in a linear format. So when we took that case and we, we identified 19 distinct six sections of the narrative, um, and each, was, each of these sections was rendered in a graphic or texture, texture format that was ready to upload in Second Life. Wait. Thanks, Sabine. We need the next slide, the game plan. Yeah, so we developed a spreadsheet to track the placement of each of those notes around the Second Life location and the assigned role to which each note related. The location used in Second Life is a photorealistic virtual representation of Dublin in Ireland and the notes distributed throughout the site. So, for example, a marketing manager would find a file in one of the offices in virtual Dublin that would contain a marketing elements of the marketing plan. Um, 
maps were provided to the students to navigate and blue pins were placed around the virtual world to highlight the location of each of those notes. Um, so the test population, as I said while we were watching the, vid the video, consisted of 55 students from two universities, 13 were undergraduate students from a Swiss business school in Geneva because as everybody knows, Switzerland is a small country and Geneva is a small city. And we had 42 postgraduate Western Australian business students. The Geneva students were all in the same location, whereas the Australian students were in a distant learning context, were working remotely. Each student was required to create an avatar that we saw uh, in the video, through which they entered the virtual world. And each student's avatar joined three others in a group that was assigned a role. So as Wade explained earlier, the roles in this specific case study were head of marketing and strategy, head of events and operations, market expert and CFO. Their mission was to explore the city and collect the case notes. And each avatar, as Wade explained, could collect only the notes that were designated to their role. So unless everybody had worked on the case, they were not able to reconstruct the complete case study. So it was important for everyone to participate. Once each team member was ga had gathered their assigned notes, they met up uh, with their group and began preparation of the case study by sharing the information collected. Each group then developed a case analysis, agreed on their recommendations, and prepared a PowerPoint presentation of their findings. We used several observation and interviewing techniques to gather feedback from this test. So here are the quantitative findings. An online questionnaire enables us to gather this information on interesting qualitative areas and quantitative areas. But we started by asking students about their level of satisfaction from the activity. One, we measured the overall satisfaction regarding the class in general, but also on three dimensions. One was the method, the case itself, and then the teamwork experience. And within each of those three dimensions, we measured the satisfaction on more specific sub-dimensions. Overall, the satisfaction was good with more than seven students out of ten very or rather satisfied. Likert scales, interesting. The satisfaction levels were good on all aspects but even more so on the teamwork aspect which was an element on which we wanted this method to add value. The Geneva students were generally more satisfied. They were also more satisfied with the method, especially the motivation and the fun. We believe that this was due to the fact that all the Geneva students were present in the same room and had interactions in the real world while they were undertaking this activity. The students didn't find this method easy, but that was not one of the objectives. The presence of a Second Life experienced person in each Australian team seems to have made things easier for them. Some students also saw a similarity between the difficulty of gathering the information in the game and the difficulty of finding information in real life job situations. The Geneva students were also, overall, more satisfied with the case itself, mostly on the opportunity it provided to develop strategic thinking. So that's probably due, we thought, to the fact that the Geneva students were less senior. They were bachelor or undergraduate students than the Australian students who were in the master's degree stream. So that might explain why the Australian students found the case a little clearer than the Geneva students. Their previous academic and work experience enabled them to better understand business issues generally. The Geneva group was also able to collaborate physically in the real world during and after the hunt, which was extremely satisfied with the teamwork potential of the method. Sabine? Have we got you there, Sabine? Shall I? Uh, just go ahead, Wade. Sabine, we can't hear you. Okay, the uh, slide after that one should be the students' reading. We asked students to compare the method to the case study, method that normally is used where they read the paper. The students found it was more entertaining, more interesting, and more interactive. So they also found it, to a certain extent, more motivating. We're quite happy with the findings, but these are clearly the main objectives the method wanted to achieve. The results were less high on the more instructive aspect, and this should clearly be addressed in the next iteration of the experiment. 
On the skills method, this method enabled to be developed, the students agree that it showed the importance of teamwork and fostered the motivation to perform the task as well as the learning in marketing. So the students had fun working cooperatively in, in solving the case. They had marginally less fun during the hunt, which was clearly um, improvable with the opportunities for how we can fix that up and further identify. Generally speaking, they were kind of technical issues, really. I've been in competition aspect, the results were a bit more contrasted, with some people loving it and some not at all. There was also a significantly higher result in GVA where the competition was formally rewarded with a prize. So definitely an element to keep in mind for the next version of our project. We asked next the students about their gaming habits. The Geneva population had more non-game playing or game players in the Australian population. <laughs> I guess that's in their nature. We're about 38% never playing games in Geneva versus only about 19% in Australia. We're also able to find out that this method was rated higher by those who play games regularly. And we've estimated that at about once a month. But an interesting result is also that those who never play games related it higher than those who rarely play. An explanation comes in the qualitative area where students who never play games explained that they were amazed to see how they found performing the tasks in Second Life as actually addictive. So probably part of those who play rarely, which we categorised as less than once a month, do so because they deliberately decided that they have no real interest, whereas those who never play games have not experienced it and thus discovered a new interest as part of their program. So the result shows the proposed method suits gamers, which is the upcoming generation of students, which is one of the hypotheses on which the research is based. But also, rather interestingly, it seems to suit those never gamers who also, to some extent, find it attractive, novelty value. And overall, and even more so in Australia, the students felt that video games should be used in class. Can you Mostly hear me now? because they make yeah. classes more interesting and because they enable them to learn interactively. Lastly, we asked students if they felt that the fact that the game took place in Second Life generated any problems. Slightly more than half the students agreed with that. For the Geneva students, it was mainly due to issues of Second Life knowledge. This was much less the case in Australia, where each group included a member with more Second Life experience. For the Australian students, the main issues were due to lag, computer slowness, and lack of responsiveness of their controls in the game. So it can be explained by the fact that they were participating remotely on their own and not necessarily with an adaptive computer and using can the you hear me connection, which was not necessarily at the highest speed. Welcome back, Sabine. Hi, thanks. Sorry, there, there was an issue. <laughs> anyway, no so problem. we're... <laughs> So we're on the slide with the uh, enthusiastic, spontaneous, qualitative feedback. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, I think it's your slide anyway, so please go ahead. Ha happy to do it. <coughs> we're pleased to receive some very enthusiastic, spontaneous, qualitative feedback. That's the slide so some before, of the positive Paige. things. Yep, some of the positive things. Can we go back to the positives? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Apologies. So the sort of things they told us were, well, what an evening. It's been really great. Another one, Second Life has to rank amongst one of my most entertaining university experiences I've ever undertaken to date. It was engaging, it was entertaining, and it was challenging. I like this one. <clears throat> I never play video games, but I found it very addictive to be all together in Second Life communicating with each other. I found it extremely interesting. Another student said, in the professional real life, each person has to find her own information. This way of presenting the case is very close to the real, real methodology, the real way of doing it. Another one is it was only the second time that we're in Second Life that's provided a double training. Training on the case and training on Second Life. So all Geneva students declared they'd be willing to go through a similar exercise again and even those that were reluctant during the information hunt. One Australian student 
signed up for a research project on Second Life after the exercise and she'll be hoping for the next iteration. That was Natasha. Yeah. During a focus group that took place after the test, the Geneva students were asked to note three adjectives describing their experience on an anonymous piece of paper. On 12 papers, four included only positive adjectives. Six included two positive and one negative. Two included a positive and two negatives, and none of them included just negative comments. So among the most often mentioned positive things, there was fun, playful, innovative, instructive, engaging, competitive, and what we really love, team spirit. Among the most often mentioned negatives, there was long, complex, difficult, um, I'm confused. I've lost the screen there. So I'm confused. Page 17 now, Sabine. Yeah. So, um, um, more, more proactively asking students for their feedback enabled also to uncover some opportunities for improvement as well. Such as, for example, uh, one of the comments said that the part on searching for the information was too long or that the information was difficult to find or that also with, with better computers it would have been better. For some on Second Life for the first time it was, it was not obvious to complete the exercise and then uh, some people and I think it's due to the um, nowadays with the GPS generation it's difficult for them to understand how to read a map. So some students has, had problems with the Dublin SL map, uh, problem to find their way around the island. Some interesting suggestions were also made by students that we used in uh, further uh, experiments that we did of this method. One of them was provide more information on what to do. The other one was being immersed in the real location of the case study, uh, Dublin Second Life, really made sense because one of the tasks that they had to do was to go on the real location of Dublin Second Life and see how it looked like. The information should be hidden in a contextual, logical location was another comment we had. And lastly, we had a comment saying that more interaction between the two countries would be good. So in order to enable this more interaction between the two countries, what we did is that in a further iteration, we provided more time for students to do the hunt so that they could uh, fix the, um, the time zone difference issues that we had with scheduling um, uh, uh, common common times uh, to do the case study. Wait, can can you move to the next slide? Sorry. Yep, certainly. Um, yeah, so for discussion really, in the research that we're doing here, we wanted to design a solution that provides an easy and a simple to implement way for marketing instructors to lift student motivation and involvement in case study preparation. So it's meant to ensure better class participation which is a key component of successful case teaching class. As a result, students going through the process should be more in the learning than students going through a traditional case preparation assignment. In addition to offering an enhanced case preparation method, we also show that tailor-made game design can be quite straightforward and financially efficient. This opens a new perspective on educational game design that frees marketing instructors from the complex process involving design, art, programming teams described by researchers as being necessary in the development of educational and serious games. So we also hope that our research contributes to show that many educational institutions present in Second Life a way of using the virtual world for a constructivist marketing teaching method as well as for training aimed at allowing learners to experience the benefits of teamwork. Finally, the research we believe shows the benefits of using a pre-packaged case study which makes it simple for instructors to switch from one case to another by simply throwing a switch to have all the case elements populate the selected locations in virtual worlds such as Second Life. So regarding the limitation and further work, this research is limited to the teaching of marketing through the case-based teaching method. It also limits the use of Second Life to the case, gathering, case data gathering. This leaves, of course, opportunities for further research work and experiments, such as looking into expanding this method to cases in other areas taught in business schools, such as finance, accounting, human resources, and others, like strategy. 
Further initiatives could also look into conducting the team discussions and the classroom case discussions on the Second Life of the Virtual World platform. This would open opportunities for the implementation of this method for distant learning courses, for conducting case-based classes with cross-border teams, showing students how beyond collaborative teamwork, cross-cultural teamwork would en enrich team results by enabling team members to look at case issues with different cultural perspectives. Conducting the whole process on the Second Life or any other flexible virtual world platform, because we conducted this uh, experiment on Second Life, but it could have been done on OpenSIM or in InWorlds or more recently on Facebook's Cloud Party virtual world, three-dimensional virtual world. So using any of these platforms would also enable to create competitions across classes schools or even across borders because these platforms can be accessed from anywhere around the world. Wait, oh, sorry. So, here's our email addresses. Uh, there's a link at the bottom of the slide which will take you to the case study competition winning information. And uh, I guess the other thing is, I believe our organisers are making this webinar recording available as a link through YouTube very shortly. We're yes. open to questions, so please. Yes, and we have lots of questions coming in, a lot of specifics that people are asking about um, this actual method and the video game. Just to repeat, both the uh, video of this webinar as well as the online video will be on our website. Um, there is some concern that YouTube is actually not available in China, so we will be looking for a way to include it on our website so it can be accessible to all on the call. Um, this question comes uh, to us. It says, can you give a more precise example of what kind of information the students see, where they look for it, how they find it, and what they actually see. So perhaps walking through a little bit of that second life in more detail for us. You want me to answer that, uh, Wade? I think, Sabine, yeah, that probably relates to your the diagram slide, the artifact okay. concept you developed. Okay, so the idea is that uh, suppose you have an information that is related to, to some financial aspects of the company, so the assumption would be that this information would be in the hands of the CFO on the company, so that would be typically an information that would be uh, uh, meant for the CFO role of this case study. So then the idea is to try to find an in an interesting way of uh, enabling the students to find this information. So in some instances there was a f we constructed a folder and then the students had to click on the folder to be able to find this information and they got a texture of the uh, uh, profit and loss account for example of the company or of any other uh, financial information that was in there. So the idea Could is I... that, yes? Could I just paint a little picture there? Maybe our listeners could imagine in a real world sense where an avatar controlled by a student would be walking through a street of Dublin and they'd look at the marketing office, perhaps it might present as a, a shop front with some desks and computers on it. So the student was able to take their avatar inside to that office to search through to maybe click on the computer screen or some files on the shelves and there was a blue uh, ping to indicate that one of the pieces of information was there. Now if that was the marketing student, it was marketing information, that information would transfer from the location where we had put it into the note card section of the avatar's toolbox. So they would be able to click on that and bring it up on the screen and be able to read that information. I just wanted to paint that picture in a three-dimensional sense. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So the idea again is that the person is the only one to get this piece of information and it's only by discussing with other team members that they can share this information. So the team can only be efficient if everybody has worked on gathering the information and they have all collected all the information. Does that kind of answer the question do you think? Yes, and, and on top of that, um, how did you actually do the programming? How much IT support is required to do that? 
So that's the beauty of Second Life is that there is no IT support whatsoever needed because it's only drag and drop stuff. So there are a lot of these um, like computers or telephones or buildings even that can be purchased on the on Second Life or even for uh, be you can get them for free. And then <clears throat> the only thing you need is a script that enables to transfer an item from that object into the avatar's inventory and these scripts also exist in Second Life so you can it's a it's sort of two files that you drag and drop from your inventory as somebody who is who is trying to build this method into the object that you want to use uh, to, to distribute the information so there is no uh, IT required the only thing that where we will probably need uh, some IT programming but that's what we will we we would like to do actually a drag and um, a prepackaged uh, uh, solution of this so the only IT programming that will be needed is to try to have an, a list of all the, the items that the avatars need to gather and that every time the avatar gets a piece there is some congratulation message that comes on, this, on the screen of the avatar. So this has not been used yet and this is the way we would like to develop in the future. Great, thank you. So in regards to preparation, uh, the avatar creation, the navigation of the interface, especially for those students who had never used it before, um, how much preparation and orientation did you do the students? Did, it, did they give an evaluation on the orientation? And did students who have used this IT equipment or this software game before have any advantages over students that have never seen it before? I think that's a really, really good question. And it's probably the biggest thing that we've discussed over time. The preparation really is, is um, takes a few steps, and what it requires is that the students need to firstly access Second Life on the internet on the website. They need to download the viewer with which they enter the virtual world. Once they've downloaded the viewer, they need to establish an account, and it's a, a cost-free account. So they need to give some information, including their email address in return for which they get access to the virtual world. And the first thing they do when they enter the virtual world is they have to make selections. They have to choose an avatar. This method has been streamlined with the new management of Second Life. It's a much easier process now than it has been. Students can actually select to represent themselves in the virtual world as uh, anything you can imagine. There's um, humans, there's computers, there's robots, even animals, butterflies, the, the imagination can stretch as far as you can uh, you can you can think, but generally speaking, it's pretty quick to select an avatar and to enter the world. And the first thing they need to do is undertake an orientation program that's already there and supplied by Second Life. And they go through a number of steps where they learn how to navigate the avatar. They need to be able to walk, they turn, they need to jump. Even uh, one of our favourites is they need to be able to fly. And the avatar can actually, um, what's the word for it, Sabine? They transport themselves from one place to another. Teleport. Teleport. Teleporting. So they need to learn those navigation skills, and it's fairly straightforward. Uh, within a half an hour to an hour, usually one of the students would be fairly confident. The next step really that becomes a little more involved is that they need to be able to use a headphone and microphone, the same as we are now, in order to speak. because. Verbal communication is a critical part of the virtual world. Students can actually talk to other avatars, and it's a location-based sound system. So the closer you are to somebody, the more easily they can hear. As you walk away, the sound dissipates. Once the basic skills that I've just described have been mastered, and that can be done in under an hour, it's really up to the, the students to experiment, to fly around, to try all the different things in preparation for the exercise. But as we started off by saying, with the digital generation, the game-based generation, most students come with some form of um, comfort in negotiating these technologies. End of answer. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, another question. Hello. Taking into account 
um, that in a regular marketing course, we are using 10 to 15 cases, depending on the number of the sessions. How many of these virtual cases can be reason reasonably included in a course? And again, we have about 15 more minutes for questions, so please go ahead in the chat feature, send in your question. If you would like to ask uh, a question to either of the panelists, you can also uh, raise your hand using the hand tool. But again, how many can you at reasonably use in a session? Sabine, let me answer that with a question first, can I, and then you can take over. Okay. As a marketer, my first question is, how many would you like to buy? How many you, Sabine? <laughs> well, the idea is that any case can be transformed with this method, uh, because you, you can also always make a case that, that is to be read. You can make it more visual, and uh, so it's up then to the teacher to decide how many uh, different types of methods he wants to include within his teaching because what often uh, I mean my experience as a teacher and I, I believe Wade's is probably similar is that the more variety you have in your teaching the more fun and entertaining it is for students and also the more motivating uh, it is for them so I would say probably not use exclusively this method but uh, use it a few times around around along the course and it will definitely take a bit longer to do the whole process so the students will have will need probably more time to gather the information and work on the case than they would do in reading the case because when they when they read the case they I mean I've seen my students they, they just ask one of them to read the case in the group and then to tell it to all the other group members and that's not what we want the students to do so they have to invest more time in preparing the case but that's uh, that's the objective of the method um, I, I know I haven't answered the question directly but indirectly I believe probably I think the, the best thing you suggested there Sabine was the variety you wouldn't want to do everything in this fashion yeah Great. I do have someone who's raising their hand, Nalini Kwame. Let me just see if she is there. Hello, Nalini, are you there? Nalini Kwame, are you there? Yes. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Where are you calling from today? Hello, um, I'm here in Maryland, but I think I raised my hand by mistake. Okay, oh, well, thank you for joining us from Maryland. Did you, since you're off of mute, did you have any questions uh, for the panelists or any comments you'd like to make? Um, What's the weather like where you are? At the are? moment, not really. All right, well, thank <laughs> you for joining us today. This is, my, this is my first webinar, so I'm just you know, enjoying and marveling at the uh, at the method and technology. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Let me go ahead and um, put you back on mute. And we have another individual, uh, Trilokan Pakaral. Trilokan, thank you for joining Hello. us today. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, Trilokan. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very yes. Clearly. Oh, yes. I, I'm Trilochan from Nepal. I'm speaking from Nepal now. Wonderful. Oh, thank you for joining yeah. us. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, my one question is, so uh, most of the time when you talk about case method, we find they are used by the business school. But actually, I'm not from the business school. I look for the executive programs and then can we use your cases in the executive programs like is the governance or the public policy? And then if asked, what can be the idea of uh, making the case for this uh, business as a public policy and governance issues? So this well, case... Do you use case Sorry. studies in your courses? Yeah, we are planning to use it. Terrific. Sabine, how about you? Yeah, I, I wanted to say that this... Um, I would say this method can be used for anything where it's it's a matter of gathering information. So if you have mm -hmm. a, a, a class where you want people to gather information on something that exists or some you know policy that exists on some country or area or whatever, then you can mm -hmm. you can use this method because you, you have to have found the information before. So it's not like you will send people on the internet and look for the information on websites. It's really a, something that has been prepared before 
because you want mm -hmm. them to come to a specific conclusion, so you want them to have a specific set of information that you want to control in a way. So mm -hmm. in, in that matter, you can take a written case study that is, you know, the Harvard method, or you can take any other case study that can be used in your discipline. That's not a problem. Uh, the, the type of program I'm dealing is uh, that's the executive development program. That's not an academic program like this other masters or you know a bachelor's program like that. So can there be fundamental difference between these two types of program uh, while using the core uh, case case method? When the executive development program, you will use some you know executive development subjects that are sometimes business subject or HR subject or strategic subjects. Is that correct or other okay, types? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to open yeah. that question up to Sabine and Wade. You've mentioned using this for undergraduate, and you've also, I think, mentioned it for graduate. Do you yes. see a role for this at the executive level, or do you think this is really more at an undergraduate or graduate level type of program that would be better for education? Could I make a, an answer to that? One of the yes. things that we're, we find really, really strong here is the, the collaboration. And one of the key findings from our work, as well as other research that we're using at the moment, is the fact that when users or participants transcend that interface on the computer and see themselves inside that environment, that fully immersive 3D environment, they spend time with others. And they could be instructors, they could be other students, they could be other executives. And what's coming back from the research is they're reporting having a sense of being in the presence of those people. Now, we're, I'm using that at the moment. We're starting to build a, a campus with SP Jane. It's a global school of management. SP Jane is a business school out of uh, Mumbai in India, very well established. We're making that a global operation. We have campuses in three locations. One is in Dubai, where I am at the moment. One is in Singapore, where I am based. And one is in Sydney, in Australia. Now, we're putting together this environment so that our students in those three different locations can collaborate together. So we're using that for the students to have a, a comprehensive community, a learning community, regardless of which of those geographic locations they are in. So using that for executive uh, development purposes, the benefit of bringing those executives together from remote locations and having them join in this virtual environment in order to undertake a task or an opportunity or to solve an issue, whatever the thing is that you're planning, allows you to get the benefit of that sense of presence with others and that enjoyment of collaboration that we've taken the feedback from our students on. Maybe to build on what um, uh, Wade also just said, we've mentioned a lot the, the digital generation, but it's important to know that the average uh, user age of Second Life is more in the 35 to 40, and there are a lot of 60-year-old people using Second Life. So there is no technology barrier in using Second Life. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that the technology should be a... Uh, um, uh, something that prevents from using this method into uh, um, older age groups. We only have a few more minutes remaining, so I'm going to go ahead and end on a last question. Um, this is a hard question. Um, I get the entertainment value, but did the instructors get a sense that students actually did better in analyzing the case? We did actually, uh, because, um, well, I'm, t I'm doing this as part of my PhD um, that I'm going to submit later this year. And of course, uh, for the sake of the research, I had to compare the results of this method with the results of the, um, the reading case method. And therefore, and you notice that we did the experiment last year and the year before, is because lately I've done the paper method to try to see um, if um, you know how, how the results compare and my my personal observation and I think Wade's too but he can comment on that was that this method enabled people to spend more time on the case to be more um, um, into the case and to feel themselves more in this the 
in the skin or in the shoes of the, the person uh, within the case and therefore the results were richer from, richer from my perspective. Wade, do you want to add something? Or I think, no, no, don't contradict. No, <laughs> <heavens>. <laughs> I think one of the benefits um, was absolutely what we suspected was that the students would focus more. The fact that they put so much effort into it and each one of them concentrated once they had the information, the ability for them, the requirement for them to share that with the others simulates a real world scenario far more closely than a paper method. So one of the outcomes I'm looking for as, a, as an instructor with particularly master students and executive MBA students is I want them to take away the skills, the capabilities, not just the answers. So we're not concentrating on the students necessarily coming up with the best solutions. We're concentrating on the way they go about it, the way that they communicate, and their ability to replicate using those skills on other cases. So we're not suggesting for a second here <clears throat> that you, every case study should be done in this fashion. What we're saying is for, for certain uses, you can get those additional benefits and those other outcomes as well. Wonderful. On that note, Wade, I want to thank both of you for sharing this very innovative tool and innovative process. Um, their emails are both on the website. If you are interested in, in starting a process like this or have specific more questions, um, please feel free to email both of our presenters or email myself, again, Lisa Leander at the Global Business School Network. I will be sending out both the recorded presentation of this webinar as well as a PDF of this PowerPoint presentation for everyone joining us today. It will also be on the GBSN website um, as well to share with your colleagues. So thank you both for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, everyone. Scott,